Hello everybody, my name is Sergey. I'm a math and physics tutor and today I want to show you how to calculate g-force. g-force is equal to normalized force divided by the wave force acting on the object near the Earth's surface. So the formula looks like this. Here n is the normal force and mg is wave force near the Earth's surface. The normal force is applied by the surface to prevent breaking down through the surface. Note that g-force has no unit of measure. It's a dimensionless quantity, because a newton divided by a newton is nothing. However, the unit of g is often used. 1g is the acceleration due to gravity at the Earth's surface. It equals 9.8 meters per second squared. So let's consider the examples. The first example. Find g-force on person standing on the ground. What is g-force on free-falling person? First of all, let's draw all the forces acting on the person. There are two forces. The wave force acting in downward direction and the normal force that is applied by the ground in upward direction. According to Newton's third law, the magnitude of the wave force is equal to that of the normal force in this particular case. So, if we substitute mg instead of n into g-force formula, we get g-force equal to 1. If the person is free-falling in the space, the only wake force acting on his body, the normal force is equal to 0, so g-force is equal to 0 too. We call that scenario a wavelessness. The second example. Find g-force on cosmonaut's body in rocket launch with acceleration of 40 meters per second squared. Let's draw all the forces acting on the cosmonaut's body inside of the rocket. According to Newton's second law, we can write the following equation. Then the normal force is equal to m multiplied by a plus g. If we substitute this equation into the formula for g-force, we get the following formula. Now we plug in the numbers and get g-force equals to 5. The third example. Find g-force on pilot's body in aircraft performing a dead loop at bottom point. The speed of the aircraft at this point is 360 km per hour. The dead loop radius is 200 meters. There are two forces acting on the pilot's body at the bottom point of a dead loop, mg and n. According to Newton's second law, the difference between these forces equals m a, where a is a normal acceleration. It equals to square of the aircraft speed divided by the loop's radius. So the normal force can be expressed as follows. And we get the following equation for g-force in this case. Calculation gives the following result. g-force is equal to 6. And the last example, number 4. Find g-force on gyro in a car that accelerates up to 180 km per hour in 10 seconds. In this case, the normal force consists of two components. The vertical component N1, its magnitude is equal to the magnitude of the wake force. And the horizontal component N2, according to Newton's second law, it equals ma. So the magnitude of the normal force vector can be obtained using Pythagorean theorem applied to this triangle on the diagram. It equals to square root of N1 squared plus n2 squared. Now we substitute this equation into g-force formula and get the required result. We should calculate acceleration that equals to final speed of the car expressed in meters per second divided by time of acceleration. So g-force equals to 1.1 or 1.1 g in this case. Thank you for watching and goodbye.